Hey brothers and sisters, this is Brother Patrick. <laughs> Trying to get rolling here in the morning and uh, I'm getting ready to go despite the, the you know the fact that uh, we are living in the end times um, and the Lord could return for his people at any time and it's been that way brothers and sisters. Uh, really for the whole time the Lord left the church waiting for his return to look up and keep looking up for the redemption. Um, and, and we are seeing, of course, all the signs of the end times. But despite that, we still occupy till he comes. We still press forward. We still do his will. So, brothers and sisters, in just a little while, I'm getting ready to go look at the house here in, uh, for, the, for the orphanage here in this place, or, which will be orphanage number three. Orphanage number four will be the place where I'm going to buy the land, which is four hours from here. And, and I'm just mentioning that at the beginning of this video. The orphanages, the two orphanages we have are two hours from me going to make an orphanage by the grace of God as the Lord has led me to make one here and then we'll make one four hours away so that the relatives of those children can visit them uh, you know like the grandparents or whatever that's alive aunts uncles whatever that will be close by and we have enough kids to, to fill up these orphanages so uh, they need us anyway brothers and sisters uh, I had a dream last night that was from the Lord now there's a brother and I who've been praying uh, that the Lord would you know tell us what's going on and, and reveal to us and we've been praying together about that when we had a chance and so um, you know I've been waiting we've been praying about it for a couple of years or at least three or four years whatever it's been uh, we we prayed in agreement and anyway so uh, we had prayed in agreement about three two or three days ago and you know didn't hear anything and then last night I had to dream brothers and sisters that was really uh definitely from the Lord I woke up at the end of the dream so I'm gonna tell you the dream and then when I woke up what was different besides the, on this dream besides the fact that I woke up which is normal I wake up if it's from the Lord usually you'll wake up but this one when I woke up I immediately got the interpretation of lots of it not all of it but I got a huge download of interpretation which is normally you have to pray and wait for the interpretation sometimes you don't get it for a couple of days or even whatever so uh, sometimes you never get the interpretation. So in this dream, brothers and sisters, um, I, I was on the, a ship, like a big love boat ship. And I just made a video the other day, and this is connected to that. And on that dream, I'll mention that, I was announcing the return of the Lord. And uh, I had been in a classroom, about to graduate. They asked me to get up and tell what the Lord had been showing me. And I said, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again to judge the quick and the dead. Uh, so, <clears throat> the Lord is coming again. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming again to judge the quick and the dead. So I announced that, and then when I went out of the classroom, I was on a big love boat, and there were layers and layers and layers of that love boat, and I was shouting it and shouting it, and people were hearing me at the different layers. So now in this dream, I was on that same boat again, but this time, in the beginning of the dream. Um, my wife's younger sister, my baby sister-in-law, she's about 21 years old. In my dream, she was my daughter, which my, I call her my, uh, you know, my illegitimate daughter is what I call her. That's my nickname for her. Anyway, in Filipino, it's, they say outside, you know, your outside child. So I call her my outside daughter in Filipino as a joke anyway because when my mother-in-law died she's been with us since she was like 15 years old 16 so um, she is like my daughter and uh, so in my dream uh, she was like my daughter there and then she was saying that um, she was waiting on her husband she was waiting on a husband she wanted a husband she was waiting on a husband okay now what happened is is that um, somebody came to see her who was a, a man who is a white guy he looked a little bit kind of like Spock and I say that because he didn't have the ears and stuff but he was real pale and pasty looking like a freak and he's had a haircut like Spock and just like a creepy looking freak looking dude so um, so what I did is is that uh, he started talking to her, and then she's like, yeah, I like this guy, I like this guy. And I, and I was saying, I, you know, I'm not sure if this is a guy for you. Um, you know, are you sure? And then she kept saying, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, uh, uh, okay. And then I said, well, here's the gifts uh, that I've given you. And he was inspecting the gifts that I'd given her. 
and talking bad about them. I'd given her all these gifts, like uh, these necklaces, gold necklaces and rings and all this different kind of stuff, jewelry and, and all kinds of little gifts. There was a, hundreds of them. And then I gave them to her, but they looked like there was like a small necklace. But when you looked at it up close, there was a whole lot more to it. It was beautiful and ornate and it, and it was more to it than what it looked like. I'd given her all these gifts. And he was inspecting them and talking bad about them. Oh, this is so small. This is nothing to this, blah, 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 like that. And telling her that, you know, saying that, uh, you know, he's going to give her all these gifts that's so great. Now, during the dream, I didn't know what the interpretation was. I was like, I was really there, you know, so. But now I know what the interpretation is. So, <clears throat> then, uh, I went and I said, well, if that's what you're going to do, fine. You know, you want to marry him, go ahead. And so, I went and sat down on the deck of the love boat, or like I said, more poetically or more uh, poetic justice as they say, whatever, it's the Titanic. <laughs> but it was like the love boat or whatever, a big luxury liner ship. So I went and sat down on the deck there and they had a bunch of people that were waiting on the wedding. And I sat down with them and then uh, I started noticing that this dude that wanted to marry her, this Spock looking dude, was actually a woman, actually a lesbian. And she was wearing like a bodysuit that looked like a man, but it was really a woman. And the more I looked at it, the more it began to look like a woman. It had a bodysuit like Pat. If you remember that from Saturday Night Live, if you ever seen that, like Pat. But the hair was like Spock. And then I kept noticing that it was a, uh, it was a woman. It became more and more looking like a woman, but still in this man's bodysuit. And to the point where you know, you could see it from a mile away or a kilometer away. Anybody could see that this was um, a woman trying to be a man. and But yet she was like a man and a woman, like Baphomet, you know. It was like a man and a woman thing going on there. And so, brothers and sisters, it really gets wild and more interesting. I stood up and I said, uh, I walked around there. I tried to talk to her again and she still, she wouldn't listen. You know, she was going to get married and I didn't want her to be upset. I was trying, you know, because she was my daughter in the dream. And I was like, you sure that's what you want to do? Are you really sure? You know, uh, you know, you can wait, you know, because I've already given you all these gifts. And, you know, you can wait. You don't have to take, you know, he's got these great gifts. You don't have to take those. You can wait. I'm going to take care of you until, a, you know, a better husband comes along. But she wouldn't listen. So I was like, okay, you know, it's your decision. It's your choice. You know, I can't force you. So go ahead. And so I went back, and then I started, I started saying to the people sitting there, is there any of you that are Christians? Are there any of you that are Christians? And in the back, like three people stood up. So I went back to those three people, and I said, uh, can you pray for my daughter? She wants to marry this, this lesbian, a homosexual, and I don't want her to. Can you, pray, can you pray in agreement with me that she will not marry this lesbian homosexual? And they said yes. And the thing is, is when I said to them, are you who here is a Christian? They stood at attention. And I walked up to them and they were standing at attention to me. And I was like, um, you know, and I asked them and they said, yes, they would pray in agreement with me. And then I went to the front of this little section, like in a church, but it was on the deck of a ship. It was lined up in rows. And I went to the front and I asked again. And then some other woman stood up and I said, are you uh, a Christian? And she said, yeah. And she wasn't standing at attention. And she was like, yes, I am. I'm a, you know, I'm the aunt of the groom. And it, but she said a woman's name. It was like Elisa or something, whatever. She said, uh, well, I can't remember the exact name. She said that. And I was like, I was like, I'm going to, she said, I'm going to ask him, her to pray. And, uh, you know, about it. And I said, whoa, 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 no, no, no. I said, Christians, Christians, you are not a Christian. I told her. And I turned around and walked away. And she was trying to argue with me as I was walking away. Oh, the bridegroom, you know, the groom is a Christian, too. Just because she's a she, he, she's still a Christian. She was trying to tell me. I turned around and walked away. So I went to other sections all over this ship. And was asking the same question, is anyone here a Christian? And then there would be just like 10% of the people or not even that would jump up at attention and say, yes, I'm a Christian. And they would say it in unison. And I would say, can you pray with me? Because my daughter is going to marry this lesbian uh, homosexual. Can you pray in agreement with me that my daughter will not marry this lesbian homosexual? And they said, yes. So then I went and to where my wife was. In my dream, there was my wife 
but it wasn't my wife on earth. It was like, I can imagine in my mind, my wife was, uh, you know, a different, you know, like somebody I don't know, a different person. It was kind of like, uh, you know, it wasn't my wife. I was, in, in that case, it wasn't my wife. And I went to her room and I started to open the bedroom door and she was taking a shower. She was in the shower, taking a shower. So I didn't disturb her. I closed the door and I kept going. And I mean, there's interpretation to that too. I'll get to it in a minute. See if you can figure it out. And so I went on up to the, up into the top of the ship and there was all these cubicles with computers and all this kind of stuff. Like you see these mainframe computer looking stuff. And there were people at each one of these stations. There was dozens. And there was like little areas with like 10 people in it. And they all each had a station. And then in the middle was this dude. And he was like doing a pet rally. He was like the whatever, the, the plant manager. But it was like a, a computer place. He was like the office manager. And he was giving them a pet rally. He was getting ready to introduce the head of the company. And he was sitting there saying, uh, are you ready? We're going to take over the world and all this kind of stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Are you ready? Like that. So. I went in there, and there were tables of people also getting ready for a wedding, but they were in there also with these other people, and they were also work for the company. And so I was like, uh, is anyone here a Christian? Is anyone? I kept saying it, but this dude was yelling so loud that they couldn't hardly hear me. And I said, is any of you a Christian? And some of them, I could read their thoughts, and they were hesitating, and they were like, I, I don't want nobody to know. They're going to fire me. I'm going to be persecuted. I'm not going to say anything that I'm a Christian. I'm not going to answer I'm going to be quiet. And I kept saying it. And then the head of the company came and then he started speaking. And, and it, I, you know, that was uh, the guy. I didn't see him. He was in my dream. I don't know that it, it would matter or the Lord didn't say, but the guy's voice was like a white guy. Okay. <clears throat> but it doesn't necessarily mean anything that the voice of his was important. But I could hear him talking, but I didn't look at him. I was looking at the people in all these different cubicles. And then, you know, I would go from one cubicle to the next. Is anyone a Christian? Is anyone here a Christian? Can you pray in agreement with me for my daughter? You know, she's going to marry this lesbian homosexual. And and, um, and then the culmination of the dream, brothers and sisters, he said, everyone that's not a Christian, you know, people weren't listening to me. Everyone that's not a Christian, stand up if you're not a Christian. And they all stood at attention for him. And uh, not almost, there was like 10% of the people were sitting down in, in all these rooms. And he said to them, "How? What's their, what countdown are you on? What countdown on your own are you on? And they said, a countdown to take over the world and rule the world and bring, have a, you know, a everlasting, uh, you know, international peace and all this kind of stuff they were saying. You know, like a phrase they said. They said it so fast I couldn't make out everything they were saying. So, you know, I believe that it's not important. But what they were saying is about dominating the world. And they were on a countdown to that. He said, what countdown are you on? And they said, we're on a countdown to dominate the world and bring world peace and blah, blah, blah. Some kind of, like a slogan they had. And then he said, he said, is anyone here a Christian? And then those other people stood up and said, here we are. And then he said, what countdown are you on? And they said, we are... Um, we are on the countdown that the tribulation will begin after the fall of 2015. They all said it in unison all at the same time, just like the other group, but they were a smaller group. They said it all at the same time. We're on a countdown that the tribulation will begin after the fall of 2015. And then I woke up and I had this horrible uh, uh, pain in my stomach that woke me up. And it was as if I was being ripped apart. The body was being ripped apart. So that's part of the interpretation. The body's being ripped apart. Um, secondly, uh, the fall can have multiple meanings. The fall of 2015, of course, meaning a financial fall or a world fall or whatever during 2015, falling away, which has already been happening in the church, those kind of things. And then, of course, there is the fall season. I believe it refers to actually, you know, the fall, like September time frame, right? Talking about all this last blood moon and all that. Now, I just want to say I'm not setting a date. This is a dream I had, and I believe it's from the Lord. And, you know, there was a date given to me in the dream, and I'm giving it, and I believe the dream was from the Lord. That's all I can say, you know. But the interpretation of the rest of it is this. I was the father. I was the father in the dream. It was like as if I was like God. And then my sister-in-law, who was like my daughter in the dream, is like the church. She's the bride. She's the bride. 
The Lord gave me interpretation as soon as I woke up, which he, ne he never did that before. She's the bride waiting on the bridegroom, but she don't want to wait. She wants to marry the wrong dude, which is the false prophet, antichrist, false church, you know, one world religion. She wants to join with this, and that religion is coming with a big dose of Baphomet, which is, you know, three or four years ago, I made a video, the Lord gave me a dream about Baphomet. You look up Baphomet, you'll see that Baphomet is androgynous, male and female. I mean, you look at Marilyn Manson. He is manifesting that satanic spirit of, of Baphomet, you know, which is this, uh, you know, homosexuality is part of it, but it's just whatever, the, whatever kind of freaky, demonic perversion of sex he's crazy demonic people can come up with whatever perversions including uh of course homosexuality is the biggest manifestation that we know uh besides all those other things that you could think of s and m or whatever they're doing bestiality and all this whatever so that was the the dude and i had given her as me as the father had given her all these gifts but this dude was offering her this he she was offering some what she thought was better gifts but they weren't you know, so that's why she was going there. And then me as the father was was not stopping her. I tried to talk her out of it. I was giving her her free will. Go ahead. You know, it's not right, but, you know, I, you know, I'm not going to force you. This is your choice. And then when I was going to the people, you know, and the people that were really Christians, they stood up. And I said, well, you pray in agreement with me about my daughter that she, you know, that she's trying to marry this homosexual lesbian, lesbian homosexual. You know, pray in agreement with me that she's not going to do it. So... You know, it's like God is asking His people to pray for the fall of this, you know, this church, the, you know, the church becoming falling away, great falling away. It must be this year of this takeover of the church, uh, a radical push, a persecution of Christians that won't accept homosexuality. Uh, you know, that's part of it. But uh, and then the last part, of course, the tribulation began in the after the fall of 2015. You know, that's what was in my dream. It's specific, and that's what woke me up. I mean, it came out of the blue, and I was shocked, you know, and it woke me up because it was so shocking. I did, it wasn't even, you know, in your dream, you don't realize what's going on. You're not thinking. I had no idea what was interpretation in my dream. It was like I was really there. I wasn't thinking, oh, this is from the Lord, and this means I'm that. No, I wasn't thinking that. During the dream, it was like real. So that's why it's totally, you know, when you explain it after the fact, no. I, you know, when you have your own dreams, lots of times you, it's like lucid dreaming, as they say. You can change things in your dream, in a regular dream. In this dream, it's like the things were moving beyond my thoughts and ideas and going, and I'm just like participating, and it's beyond my control. As where a regular dream that you have, myself, you can change things. Go back and redo things. It's lucid, as they say. You can change it. This, no, when it's from the Lord or from the enemy sometimes, people have dreams that's from the devil or whatever, uh, from a spirit or whatnot. Um, you know, and of course the difference is, of course, if it's from God, it's going to bring glory to God. It's going to line up with the word of God. If it's from the enemy, it's going to be, scare you, not to repentance, but, you know, it's going to be evil and scary and lead you to sin and, and all this kind of stuff. And hate God or whatever might lead you in the dream, um, you know, from a, from a, a dirty or evil spiritual force. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can add to this dream, brothers and sisters. You know, I mean, I've I, I just been up a little while and I haven't even had time to think about it, but the Lord just gave me that when I first woke up. And the Lord was trying to tell me other stuff too. I started having these night visions, but I was half asleep. And the Lord told me other things confirming what I just said. And I can't remember what they are now. I'll think about it. I'll make another video later uh, to confirm this more as I pray about it. I haven't had a chance to really even pray about it. I want to get this video made because I'm going to go look at this house and I'll be gone and I want to get this thing out. Anyway, brothers and sisters... Uh, God bless you guys. Um, you know, I, I, I'm like I say, I'm not. I'm just reporting what I had in my dream, and I believe it was from the Lord. I'm convinced in my heart that it was from the Lord. So, uh, you know, and you, if you've been following me, I've never set a date. I gave a word from the Lord that the harvest is in Abib, which doesn't, you know, doesn't mean this March. It means the harvest is the first part of the harvest is ready. The harvest is ready now is what it means, not necessarily even though it could be it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be this march so i didn't set a date for march well it, could it be in march yeah could be great hope it's today i don't know no man knows the day or the hour i'm just reporting the dream that i had take it for what it's worth you know no man's word is equal to the word of god 
There are a lot of people that take something that someone says in a video as the equal to the Word of God. You know, I don't do that. I always take it with a grain of salt because people are not perfect. And the Bible's already been written. We're not adding to the, to the Bible. But, um, you know, there's times when the Lord gave me a word and I knew, you know, a, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom for somebody. And I knew that I knew that I knew that it was right and it was going to happen. There's lots of you when I was doing those videos and people in private who I've given words to and they definitely happened. I knew it was definitely going to happen. Now, dreams, that's a whole metaphoric kind of a thing. And uh, I'm not sure, I guess I've had, I've had dreams that's, you know, that's really come to pass. But usually dreams are not literal, like the dream that I just had. It's not literal, it's metaphoric. So, you know, that's where you get this interpretation of it. You know, and some elements of it are what God's trying to show you. And some of the elements he's not trying to show you. You know, there's sometimes, there's lots of people that send me their dreams. And they give all the exact little details of every little thing of it. When in reality... The Lord wants us to, like if he shows you a group of 100 people and one person is wearing a bright red dress, like in the movie The uh, Schindler's List, and that per person with the bright red dress comes towards you, then there's some meaning to that bright red dress. You don't have to sit there and say, oh yeah, I saw somebody wearing a green shirt and blue pants and all this other, you know, go through an hour-long story about the colors in, of everybody else's clothes. Just that one that's like God was focusing you in on, and there's a meaning to that. The color red something to do with the you know clothing what's the meaning of the color red in this dream and something like that so it's what god focuses you on you cannot know a million things in one dream there's just a handful of things you know or maybe even one thing the lord's trying to show you so that's just a little help with your dreams lots of you guys have dreams and uh <clears throat> i help you your interpretation anyway brothers and sisters god bless you if you get a chance to about dream interpretation uh, you can watch uh, some videos of the late prophet uh, John Paul Jackson, um, he's got lots of videos, and you know, there's people ask, given his, given their dreams, and he interprets it at, at churches, and then you can listen to him and and see, you know, the biblical base of dream interpretation. Even though sometimes the Lord would give us interpretation in our spirit, like a word of wisdom, but like interpretation of tongues. But lots of times we can look in the Bible and see how that that symbol has already been interpreted, like in the dreams from Joseph or whatever. You say, oh, well, we know what this means because there it is in the Bible. Sometimes it's not in the Bible. You know, so, but if God gives you something, usually, it, you know, it's going to be something that's also out of the Bible. You can say, oh, there it is right there in the Bible. Anyway, brothers and sisters, God bless you. May the Lord be with you. And I always try to teach people to fish, not give people a fish, but teach them how to fish so they can fish for themselves. Brothers and sisters, God bless you.